Hello, welcome to the new video. Uh, this time we have something different. I didn't have this kind of thing in a long time. We are playing Elementals. And I'm making this video because I think uh, currently this archetype is uh, very well underplayed. And uh, I didn't play against uh, pure Elemental build uh, in a long, long time on MTGO. Maybe on paper people still play it uh, and uh, have it uh, built, but I really haven't played for a long time against a pure uh, elemental build, build on MTGO. And uh, this is uh, my version and uh, I will, uh, after we watch some videos, after we watch the league, I will just uh, comment uh, on the some main board inclusions and sideboard inclusions. But I think uh, I'm making this video because I think this uh, kind of build is incredibly strong right now for the current meta game, and uh, this deck just has everything uh, needed to fight uh, to fight all decks in modern, not just uh, the fair uh, agro decks. But uh, it also has the fairy force of negation and can really easily draw a lot of them when the deck gets out of the hand and. Uh, it can very easily win against all uh, aggro and mid-range decks by just generating insane value with Ryzen Reef and trying to protect it with Ephemerate, Momentary Blink, uh, also Force of Negation, two of those in the main, two of those on the side, possible uh, addition of extra uh, counter spells like Dolin's Veto, Fluster Storm on the sideboard, uh, but uh, I think it wasn't necessary for the current metagame i don't expect to see a lot of uh, combo stuff mostly the mid-range uh, and uh, aggro stuff and maybe a few cascade uh, builds but we can easily fight cascade rhinos with this build okay so um uh <clears throat> I'm, I chose to play uh, some kind of, not just uh, the Rise and Reef and the Solitude Fury stuff, but I chose to play some uh, Disruption uh, or Protection, whatever you want to call it, because uh, Teferi is our great enemy uh, with uh, four Ephemerates in the deck, and uh, I use uh, Subtlety and the Force of Negation in the main to fight the Teferi or but also to fight uh, opponents uh, run and sixes because run and six uh, can ping our rise and reef and though we can uh, we can play through it very well but uh, it's much easier game if you just uh, if you just force the run or subtly the run or whatever and um, i think uh, subtlety is, is it just works really well uh, with Reef. After you play it turn 3, you can instantly get uh, protection from the Ren, from the Teferi, from uh, other dangerous creatures for our deck. And uh, just well, I like uh, opponents, Fury, Solitude, stuff like that. So I think subtlety is just very important. Uh, in this build, the Force of Negation also, I think uh, the deck will just lose a huge amount of games uh, just because of not uh, having the access to force of negation in the main and I think just uh, drawing one uh, accidentally uh, at the beginning of the game can be just uh, game changing. Uh, so I decided to include the two forces main, two on sideboard, uh, possible, of, depending on your meta game, possible inclusion of uh, faster storms or domains, extra domains veto in the main. So uh, I, uh, for this version, I chose to play one Orvar dual form uh, main. We can tutor the Orvar with Flame King Harbinger. We're playing uh, seven blink spells and Orvar is very good with blink spells. It says when you cast an instant a sorcery spell, uh, you just make a copy of uh, your uh, of creature you're targeting with the blink effect. So you can basically just uh, go turn five or turn four if you have a Topia Sprawl. Uh, you can go turn four Orvar and save mana for Ephemerate and uh, pitch elemental in your hand. So when your opponent tries to do something, you just uh, pitch pitch cast uh, Solitude, uh, then use Ephemerate uh, to blink Solitude, then uh, get another Solitude uh, ability, but also create a token Solitude. Uh, and it can get uh, really crazy really quick 
and I, uh, it is just a one-off and it's enough uh, as a one-off uh, in the main because we can tutor it with uh, three flamekin harbingers uh, but also orvar is uh, in the main because uh, the creativity matchup is so often lately especially in the leagues that uh, having one uh, i talked about having one orvar in the main as uh, as a creature that is good by itself in the deck, it's also elemental. It allows us to still play Kahira. It's good. It triggers the Reef ability, uh, but also it's great with our seven blink spells, and it can get out of the hand really quickly. Uh, like uh, against, uh, it, it can be relevant against uh, when playing the mirror match, when playing the regular a uh, four color, and stuff like that. But um, uh, it is just. Uh, okay card to play the deck but has a great accidental hate against uh, one of the most played decks in the format right now so i played two leagues both leagues finished 4-1 didn't see uh, any creativity but when i switched deck uh, switched to a different deck i immediately uh, played two creativities in, in the row so i still think that orvar is fine inclusion uh, for the main tutorable piece that works great with uh, blink effect. So, as for the blink effects, we are playing, of course, for ephemerate, the best uh, blink, blink spell in the format, but also we are playing uh, three momentary blinks. So, um, we are just. Uh, uh, this uh, this is uh, the second, uh, probably the second best blink spell uh, in the whole mtg uh, so uh, the thing is uh, it has a flashback that is really useful people will often forget about you having the flashback memory and blink in the side in the graveyard uh, but uh, it is also great uh, it and more, more useful when your opponent uh, resolves the teferi you can actually uh, sorcery speed uh, play the momentary blink and then just recast it from the graveyard but Differences when you cast the ephemerate, you lose, uh, you lose the rebound uh, effect because of the opponent's Teferi. Uh, so I think it's um, still very useful. So you can use, you can of course use, uh, use a uh, momentary blink to found on uh, Harbinger to find your foundation, to find your sorry fury, uh, to get rid of the Teferi or foundation breaker to get rid of the to get rid of uh, the chalice uh, so you can use ephemerate or whatever so uh i think this uh, build i made is very 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 close to optimal uh depending on your meta game you can of course uh, cut the orvar uh, you can maybe cut uh, one uh, blink effect although i discovered those blink effects are incredibly useful in the deck as you will see i I don't be, I just don't don't understand why didn't anyone play the momentary blink before in their elementals deck because it's just uh, like the, the the most desirable uh, most desirable effect you can you would want in this deck and you always have something to do with the blink even with seven of them in your hand one of those will probably get uh, exiled with solitude pitch during the hand but it's just incredibly incredibly um, efficient and most of the times when you have rise and reef on the field and trying to pitch uh, your elementals from your hand for free uh, while uh, trying to dig for some out, uh, some way out for you to uh, get back to the game or win the game, there is like a huge possibility of just uh, drawing the ephemerate or momentary blink uh, from top of your deck as you play seven of them, and you can play with a walk ability on the stack, uh, resolve uh, the rise and reef effects first, uh, resolve the pitch elementals effects first and then trying to top deck the blink spell uh, it just was uh, as you will see during the gameplay it was very effective in a lot of cases and i was able by just pitching uh, two three uh, elementals uh, pitch uh, playing with the walk on the stack i was able to top deck uh, ephemerate or momentary blink and then use it and then just completely blow out the opponent and of one time okay so in the in the two leagues i played i didn't face uh, creativity even once 
So uh, Orwell wasn't very useful in, uh, in, in that manner, but uh, one time, one game, I, uh, I just rarely also draw it during the two leagues, really rare. And uh, in cases I had it in hand, I was already winning so much that it, it wasn't needed. But one time I win uh, the Tron matchup with Orvar, just played the Orvar turn 3. And then turn 4, uh, played the Fulminator Mage and cast uh, Ephemerate on Fulminator Mage, uh, making a copy of Fulminator and just uh, destroying uh, two of my opponents. Uh, took my opponent's uh, land for immediate uh, for immediate uh, concede. Okay, so uh, that's it. Uh, rents uh, are also like I think uh, inclusion that can be cut from this hand, but it just uh, works uh, very really well in the elementals deck. It's a uh, it's a uh, removal for your opponent's Ragavan, good removal, uh, especially when you're playing first, but it's also, it can be cool when playing second. It's a good pitch target for your Fury, as you uh, kind of have the same amount of red and white spells to pitch on your Solitude and Fury, and it has been a good uh, balance so far, because deck draws so many cards, you're just able to filter through uh, the blue, uh, white, and red cards uh, you have in your hand to have it as a pitch uh, card for your elementals. So it, uh, I, I'm really satisfied with the number of white, red, and blue cards, and uh, it has worked uh, well so far. So uh, uh, some uh, important, very important card that is usually very good in elementals is of course the fairy in this version i have it on my sideboard uh, i think uh, it is the one card that i would probably uh, be very glad to introduce to the main and i would do that by cutting one momentary blink and cutting uh, two orvars to fit in the two the fairy main but for this video and for this league i decided to go to try the Orvar stuff, I uh, just uh, I, I was in theoretically very satisfied with the option to have Orvar uh, tutored with Harbinger turn one against Creativity matchup. I think Creativity matchup can be tricky with this build because it's a very slow deck, and um, they can just try to go for. Uh, two, three, four Archons uh, at a time, they don't need to hurry, they don't need to rush, we just have the force which they can they can answer with their counter spells. And so uh, I think the Orvar is uh, very important, especially King 1, uh, trying um, to win that matchup. So uh, I'm very satisfied with the Orvar ability to just uh, turn around that matchup in game 1, uh, win game one be just because you have tutorable uh, 104 bar in your deck which uh, actually who actually works very well with the rest of your deck so um that's it and uh, but i still i think that in uh, non-creativity uh, metas uh to the fairies main would be great inclusion okay so uh this deck just has uh, has performed phenomenal for me I have a crazy amount of uh, win rate with this deck, and um, as I said, it's definitely currently uh, underplayed. And uh, we are just going to go through the two, two leagues I played last, see the matches, and uh, see just how power powerful the deck uh, really performed. Okay, so uh, we'll go through the last league first, and then through the league before that. Okay, so uh, this uh, probably a bit longer video because uh, the games are a bit slower with this deck. Okay, so uh, game one, my opponent started with Stomping Ground, uh, DRC, a bubble. Uh, I just had a very slow hand, but we are, remember that we are playing a seven. Uh, seven uh, blink effects, so just holding uh, two furies uh, 
just against the creature deck has uh, get, can have really high probability of very high probability of finding your blink spell and just killing your opponents quick. So it turns out that uh, my opponent is actually playing playing Junt. And you will see in the last uh, match of the league, I also played Junt and unfortunately uh, lost the game for the trophy. I think uh, Jun, Jun, a new Junt is very uh, grindy. Uh, not all the versions are the same. Uh, this version was definitely not the same as the version I played in the last match. This was the Lily version. This was like uh, more of a boomer junt, but still not boomer junt, like some combination of boomer and zoomer junt without, I think it, it was version without Tears of Saga. Okay, so at this point I just went to Kahira to hand and decided it's best to go uh, kill this Lily right away, try to, uh, try to put Omnath into, uh, into play next turn, but unfortunately my opponent had uh, another Lily. Uh, I was still able to go Omnath next turn, but my opponent will have no problems dealing with that, so I was in a pretty unfavorable unf position this game won. And I drew Ren, so at this point I decided uh, it's, a, it's best to try to top deck something, uh, save, uh, Ren is very good against Lily, so you can just uh, put uh, lands into your hand which you can discard uh, later and then uh, bring your, your bring the land back to your hand, so it works really fine when it's just Lily on the opponent's board, but unfortunately it wasn't just Lily. Um, they had a good pressure, uh, 5 damage on the table. I didn't have uh, much choice at this point. I could have waited for uh, one more turn, tried to top deck the Fury or something. But uh, I would, uh, then the opponent's Lily would go to six, and I would be forced to. I'm forced to top deck another land because my, my Ren was definitely about to die here. And uh, my opponent's Lily would be at 6, so I would be forced to draw another land and try to kill a Lily with Omnath. I would also be on 5 life, which is definitely worse than 14. I didn't uh, draw into another fetch. Uh, which means I wouldn't be able to to survive the turn anyway. And uh, that's it, so that's the game one. I was unable to get out of this situation. So uh, game two, game two, it's definitely, uh, my, my deck is definitely favorable to win this, especially with the hand where you draw the Utopia Sprawl. And uh, yeah. It's a pretty bad. Uh, I have a very low amount of uh, important uh, spells under uh, the under three mana, so Inquisition should be a pretty bad play against uh, against our deck. Okay, so a pretty good position for me. I just at this point I just have to be careful which color to choose with Utopia and what land to uh, which land to uh, fetch with heat. So I, uh, I had a white uh, mana in hand, so I went for Stompy Ground, so I'm able to uh, cast the Omnats next turn. I drew into Cavern of Souls and then I decided to go 
uh, for a whole subtlety instead of a cast run and just attack the run, put it on one. I was in a pretty good spot here and I was able to cast Omnath with a whole uh, ephemerate next turn, so it wasn't really necessary to to do this and my opponent went uh, went, uh, went Riveteer's Charm my opponent went uh, Riveteer's Charm just a second okay okay sorry I'm back uh, my opponent I was able to kill their ran a sec my subtlety and my opponent played the two golf uh, next turn and as I said I was able to cast the Omnath uh, and hold Ephemerate uh, next turn which is, which puts me in a pretty decent position I'm able to just uh, partially ignore uh, the Goyfs because they are attacking me but uh, I'm just gaining a lot of life every turn uh, the Turak is definitely uh, one of the worst things uh, the jumped opponent can cast against you and you will see uh, in the both times my opponent cast Turok they, I was just left with a land in hand and all good spells got discarded uh, at this point it feels like some kind of bug because last three times uh, the same thing happened uh, I was just uh, able to use the ephemerate anyway drew into uh, one more card to put myself in a slightly better position and uh, top deck trend was kind of decent also momentary blink it enabled me to enabled me to uh, uh, unfortunately I tapped wrong so I wasn't able to hold the momentary blink and that's why I decided to use it immediately and just to draw another card it wasn't perfect, definitely, but uh, at least my opponent wasted the Inquisition. And uh, they went uh, just to kill the Omnath and the go for Void Mirror. Void Mirror wasn't really important anymore. I just uh, had a Decent top deck again, a Fury uh, to kill the Turok, uh, and uh, I had to, of course, skip the attack because our opponent's go stayed back. Uh, I had still had uh, the uh, momentary blink in my graveyard to make these goals smaller. I decided to immediately try to trade with this goal because it was too much damage coming from them and my opponent had the ravine I top decked the Poseidon and I decided to go with endurance him my opponent decided to double block so uh, this channel would uh, die anyway channel would die anyway so uh, on attack, but it's uh, definitely uh, also good resolving this in this manner. So, my opponent went for the go if I uh, wanted to just uh, cast uh, block the uh, with endurance, uh, uh, blink my endurance with momentary blink from graveyard, uh, make golf a lot smaller. Actually, 3 4 at this point doesn't even uh, seem uh, uh, it's smaller than endurance, and my opponent was with uh, nothing in their hand and decide to concede okay so uh, game 3 okay so you can also see in this video that this uh, June deck uh, got a lot grindier than it was before especially uh, especially the, the Saga version and you can, uh, and I, I just uh, noticed that uh, these uh, June decks are performing uh, quite well and are quite popular recently. It seems like uh, some resurgence of Junt. My opponent discarded the run 
but I top decked another, which was uh, which was very nice at this point. I'm just uh, going. Uh, uh, it uh, the second run would be dead anyway, so it's a good thing they discarded the first one. They didn't do much in the first uh, few turns, so I was just able to stay back with a bunch of uh, pitch elementals in my hand, also on that. They went for a uh, seasoned Paramancer and they were already, already kind of slow, and uh, that's why I decided to ditch the Omnath to subtlety the seasoned Paramancer. They put it on top there of their uh, library. But uh, just uh, another good, another Rising Reef from the top of the deck meant that uh, their Paramancer is probably going to be a bad play uh, for them next turn. They just have to deal with the Reef. And I also drew into the Omnath. I think this uh, subtlety was a very defining card in this matchup and it was very important for me to be able to cast it at this point i just uh, wanted to have double red for fury next turn but also first to go uh, harbinger and find omnath to be able to Cast the Omnath to play Fury next turn, the well known, uh, powerful play from Four Color Omnath Pass, of course. And uh, it, that's definitely what I did. I just went to Omnath to, to find another Fury, and uh, immediately, I wanted to immediately play my Fury so I can. Uh, I can double block the Tarmogoyf and trade with Tarmogoyf and, uh, and I still have the double Fury next turn. Also, my uh, Ren is at 7 at this point. I don't have much instance, but I do have the Ephemerate. And they are pretty useful too. I decide to go with a double block here because I have double fury in my hand. They did have another Tarmogoyf, but it wasn't very important because I had double fury and there's not much they can do about double fury. So I just uh, was able to kill uh, both Goyf and Elemental Token. I find the ephem ephemerate and have a brand on it, which is uh, definitely unminable situation for them with zero cards in hand, and that was game one. Okay, a uh, second game was against Menione. Uh, Menione is kind of uh, switching between the Rhinos and uh, Living End decks in. Uh, so I wasn't sure which one of those he's playing, but uh, you can mostly know that after after turn one they just pitch the architects of will, and it's of uh, they just cycle, and it's of course the living end. I had uh, two force of negations in hand, but. My opponent is playing first, but it seems like uh, maybe they didn't expect me to play the force, and but also they had a force in hand, so it was maybe irrelevant for them. So they decided to they decided to go for the living end. I tried to cast my force, but I hit their force, and nothing I can really do about that. So I just had to let uh, let them resolve this, and uh, I was able to pitch my uh, subtlety to get it back on the field to be able to block at least one of the creatures, and then maybe if I drew the fury or the solitude, I would be able to kill 
the two other creatures and uh, win the game or just to be at a very good position. Yeah, of, of course I traded with one of architects. I was just on a nine life, so basically the pitch elementals uh, save me. Uh, I just uh, I had Orvar, which wasn't very useful top deck at this point, but Omnat was getting me to survive the next turn, but they had Yotavara and they finished me, that was it. Okay, so I was still, after them, resolving. You can win a lot of games like that. You will see the last game. Uh, you can win a lot of games uh, just by... Top decking the Fury or Solitude and then blinking them a bunch of times. Uh, I kept a uh, mediocre hand. Uh, in game 2, I had Endurance in hand though, so it was okay. I didn't want them to, to use the Fire Eyes. So I just uh, fetched all my basics uh, turn 3 and get Kahira to hand, mostly to have it as a, a solid, as a pit, as a target for endurance pitch, endurance pitch. Because I needed to save the Omnath for uh, a subtlety pitch. And I drew into Reef and I decided to go with Reef. Uh, I kind of uh, must play that card or they will just uh, go Okay, so a lot of spells were cast here I uh, went, uh, they went land, land in response to reef ability and I uh, I tried to endurance but they subtlety then I play my subtlety and then I get at the reef ability result and uh, my opponent just uh, get back the three creatures from their graveyard and I traded with subtlety and take a seven damage which was uh, fine which was fine I just uh, just resolve the reef resolve the fury uh, ephemerate the fury, get another reef ability, so I'm good even if my opponent plays the second living end because I have another reef in the graveyard. I have the solitude in I have the reef and subtlety in the graveyard, solitude in the hand, and my opponent tried to remove try to resolve the second living end, but I, I pitch the fury, get the reef ability going and uh, put my solitude into graveyard and my opponent conceded so okay so game three game three was also interesting i knew that i was probably have to go uh, in game three you kind of have to let them resolve the living end and then try to win after that it's it's probably best if they just do it uh, turn three uh, so okay, so at this point my opponent went for uh, grief, and in this situation they would definitely just uh, remove the fairy from my hand. So I decided to just pitch the solitude, put solitude in my graveyard. It's it's very decent to have solitude in your graveyard against uh, against living end deck. Um, that gives you kind of more time to draw a force or another the fairy. Uh, something like that and uh, I also exiled the grief it doesn't go to graveyard it's very re relevant if they resolve the living end they don't get the grief and discard my best uh, card they also put uh, they were forced to put a creature card in my graveyard which means if they uh, re resolve the living end without endurance in their hand I'm going to I'm going to get the solitude and the reef uh, in the play from my graveyard, which is definitely great, yeah. Uh, so uh, my opponent didn't have uh, the third land. I decided to definitely go for the Omnath. 
and they still uh, haven't found a third land and it was kind of risky and uh, the chances were high they were going to find a third land at this point and uh, but I decided to go for it anyway and this is where I made a mistake uh, I made a mistake by not playing the flawless trend, finding the steam wins. It was just uh, I was just playing too quick, and I didn't think about uh, not having the force of negation uh, able to cast when I untap. If I found the steam wins and cast the harbinger with steam wins, I would be in a pretty great position. And this was very bad, but uh, at least I had a reef sorted in my graveyard. And uh, my opponent uh, cast, uh, cast the outburst, but uh, returning reef with two reef effects in play is very, very risky. My opponent decided to go for it anyway. And I find the Fury and the Endurance from top of my deck, but also I find a second Reef, which is just amazing at this point. So I go for the double Reef, I get the two abilities. I immediately... Uh, I just casted the Endurance just to get the Reef abilities, then I cast the Solitude, um, get uh, again two cards, I Ephemerated the Solitude, but they had a Force for my Ephemerate, but uh, I'm sure that I'm definitely going to survive uh, for the next turn, and the next turn with two Reefs on the field, my opponent is definitely going to be in the problem. Uh, just uh, the solitude wasn't uh, very important anymore, so I just wanted to uh, block with solitude to be sure I'm going to survive. And uh, le left with two reefs, untapped with two reefs, it's pretty bad position for my opponent. I just played the Omat uh, and they conceded. Okay, that was the game two. The game tree. I had to, I had a bad first hand. Oh, so sorry. To, this is the match tree, not the game tree. Okay, so I kept a decent hand against what it seemed as a hammer time, but it wasn't really hammer time because my opponent played Giganta, so it was. Uh, I think. I think it was maybe a sparring spike brew or something. I wasn't very familiar with the deck. At this point, I was still unsure if my opponent is playing Hammer Time. So I just uh, went uh, for the Reef, hold Force, hold Subtlety. It's just a classic play with this deck, and it's very strong. At this point, I was just happy that my opponent didn't play Sigarda's 8 or Hammer. They also decided against. They decided against putting Caldra into play for this turn. They decided to just go for the both tokens. Try to win with tokens, and it definitely worked for them in the end. They were just playing, decided again against Kaldra, just went. I've needed the solitude very much. I did. Uh, I did get uh, the. I did find the ephemerate, 
this turn I was trying to find the actually the fetch for uh, Omnat, so I get uh, f 5 mana from Omnat. And unfortunately, my opponent uh, had the dispatch. I wasn't, uh, I definitely wasn't expecting the dispatch here. And it's definitely what uh, won the game for my opponent. And after all of this resolving, I had to kill the Stoneforge to make them unable to put the Kaldra into play. And uh, this patch saved them from me killing the bold construct, and construct just uh, kind of finished the game. Uh, at this point, I was unable to survive that, and um, that's it. So I decided to play it a bit riskier, and it didn't uh, pay off because of the opponent's dispatch. But as I said, I wasn't really familiar with the deck. And I definitely didn't expect the dispatch in the main. They these decks usually only play the the one mana one mana artifact that removes creature, which is useless against our deck. Okay, so. Uh, Coming hand with uh, three blink effects and solitude, you can just imagine how good uh, that is against when playing against a deck like this. So I decided just to pitch a uh, one solitude, uh, so just uh, to lower the pressure from my opponent's side, and uh, I also had another one in the hand. So. I decided this is a good time for me to kill both of my creatures, play the Solitude, I also played the Jokas Pro, played Harbinger, find another Rising Reef, put another Rising Reef on top of my hand with the Ephemerate. Uh, with the Ephemerate hand, it's practically a game over. I was able to kill the second construct, play the Reef, uh, play the Ephemerate immediately, kill the Stoneforge and have the ephemerate resolving next turn with another subtlety in hand and it was pretty good, pretty good position for me my opponent uh, countered my ephemerate with void mirror I found another one and uh, when you are at this position you are able, uh, you're able to flicker the harbinger and then resolve the harbinger first found, uh, put foundation bringer on top of your library and put it immediately in hand with the Rise and Reef ability, so I was able to get rid of the uh, Void Mirror to be able to resolve the Ephemerate next turn, but... I could have played the subtlety here, but it just wasn't that much important. My opponent uh, succeeded. It wasn't uh, really important, just resolving the second reef next turn, it's pretty much game over. Uh, they attack with everything. But as you, you can now see what I was talking about before, so uh, you just uh, play uh, with the evoke ability on the stack a lot of the time and you're able to find the blink spell and uh, you're playing the seven blink spells in your deck so it's not uh, that low possibility to just be able to find it uh, very often and if not you, if not that you can find the second solitude or subtlety and then have another look and uh, I think uh, just uh, that this uh, momentary blink is very good because of having the flashback it's uh, it gets you the same amount of value as ephemerate but for a whole lot more money. but uh, just having the option to to play it twice makes it uh, good and uh, so the game was over just it was I was in no need to play any of my spells I just needed to attack 
for a few turns and finish the games and at this point my uh, clock was on 11 minutes so I just wanted to didn't want to trigger the reef because it takes a lot of time from your clock I just wanted to uh, just wanted to attack with the creatures and finish this game Okay, uh, there was nothing, not much to see here, just a few attacks from me and this game was over. And uh, it was time for game 3. Okay, so I lost the game 1 partially to thinking I was probably against, uh, paired against the hammer time. So I played a bit more aggressively than I should have. I could have gone for kill. Uh, I didn't expect the dispatch, definitely. I expect the, expected them to hold the blacksmith's kill or something like that, but not dispatch. Uh, I, I was in an okay situation uh, this game, having the momentary blink, solitude, with force of vigor in hand, and the reef. It's kind of almost a perfect hand. I doubt, doubt there's a lot more you want to have at this position. I decided when I drew the ephemerate, I decided against uh, uh, playing the reef and ditching the solitude. I wanted to just cast my solitude and play the ephemerate without them drawing a card. And uh, I was able to then resolve the rebound from uh, the resolve the rebound from ephemerate then cast my reef and uh, uh, pass the turn with the force of figure and two furies which is obviously great to have against any aggro deck uh, second the Ryzen reef was also very good, especially because they had the removal for the first one. I decided to just immediately go Fury. It wasn't necessary, but it's just uh, this deck has so much resources, you're just able to uh, kind of waste them like this. Uh, they went for uh, Aven to block. The Rising Reef, it wasn't even important because at this point the game is unwinnable for them. My top decks are just better than theirs and it's nearly impossible. I think it's probably impossible to for them to win the match because I've just uh, top deck the Solitudes, the Omnats, uh, Rising Reefs, uh, Subtleties, uh, the Fairies, whatever. And they will top deck the Dispatch, Restoration of Eganjo and stuff like that so there's just no chance for them to be able to grind this game out I went for subtlety here because just it's just too good not to play it and they don't have another green or red source to cast the Giganta casting the second reef here is just an overkill uh, trying to uh, find lands uh, to deal damage with Domnats to end the game as quickly as possible but that was it, my opponent uh, conceded okay so uh, that was the third game off to the fourth one you can see just uh, how effective those blink spells are against a lot of these matchups and just uh, having uh, seven of them in the deck feels incredibly good um, this harbinger is also very decent uh, decent turn one and two play and uh, i think having three of them is kind of perfect okay so uh game four i played against uh, i think the mirror it was also four color on that part just without the reef and of course 
I'm in lot of advantage here because the reef focused full color piles just outgrind the regular the reefless full color piles. They of course have the Wren, and Wren is a very difficult opponent. But I also have all the other tools. I could have gone for a Fury this turn, but I decided to just uh, hold it for the next turn. And it was, I think it was definitely a good decision. Uh, I just failed with the fetching. I should have tapped the Steam Wentz and uh, left two white uh, sources untapped so I can use, I can use the two. Uh, just a second. Okay. Uh, sorry about the small pause. Uh, I failed because I didn't leave the two white mana open. Uh, but it uh, wasn't that important anyway. I had a very decent hand and I was able to find another Ryzen Reef with the Harbinger, put it uh, on top of my library and also find the Omnath with the Reef ability and Solitude F plus Solitude F It is just really, really, really strong hand. My opponent decides to go for Lane Lane Binding. It wasn't really important. They should have just pink the reef and let the harbinger live. They could have gone for the ley line here. Okay, so again, just uh, I just casted the omnat reef, get that uh, double uh, double ability going on. And uh, my opponent uh, went for their on that. I went for Solitude before they resolve uh, the ability. Getting the 4 life in the process. I think it was uh, very important not to let them have the 7 mana available here. They went just... Uh, they didn't even ping the reef. They went for Omnath kill, but it was definitely a mistake. They should, you just have to kill the Reef. Reef is... Reef is definitely the best... The best card in, in this matchup, and... Uh, so I just played Reef and Fury, my opponent uh, decided it was enough, and uh, that's it. Okay, that's sorry, this was the game one. It's just very difficult for your for the deck to add grind the reef version. It they can of course do it because they play uh they play Vren, they play Teferi. Uh, uh, these are the guy uh, the cards that uh, deal with a reef uh, well and the family too. They play their own at solitude. It's uh, it's pretty even matchup, definitely. But I think this one is definitely uh, well favored uh, to win this fight. Uh, you can uh, this. Uh, they were obviously holding the counter spell. It was uh, very obvious. So because they shocked in the second blue mana. And uh, I was in uh, no need to cast uh, any of my cards, so I just decided to, if a game lasts longer, it's going in my favor anyway. And when I drew the subtlety, I just wanted to hold the subtlety definitely. I didn't... Uh, Play anything again, and I just decided to go for the Kahira again. Just don't do anything. I pass the turn. My opponent didn't have the they decided to go for the Teferi. They used 
uh, they used the counter spell they had and I put the Teferi back on the top of their library. They are already on 11 life and uh, I used my Ephemerate uh, to blink the Harbinger uh, to find uh, again Ryzen Reef, put it on top of my ability and upkeep and immediately play it while holding the Ephemerate. It's just uh, very good, very good um, aggressive play at this point and you can see just how well uh, did subtlety and force uh, just beat this fight and when I went to the blink subtlety on their Teferi play and they conceded uh, that was it uh, and uh, the last match of the league was against my uh, second Jund opponent which uh, he played first and uh, when I saw the Giganta, I saw the Giganta and I didn't play against a lot of these uh, Junt before uh, today so I was kind of confused and wasn't sure what my opponent was playing even now I saw the Giganta, saw the basic mountain, I thought he's probably playing the Proas or some mono red uh, and I decided to waste all my resources but then just after that I when they played the saga I figured out I definitely uh, that definitely wasn't a very good decision because my opponent is playing the slow grindy deck and not and not some ultra aggressive uh, ultra aggressive deck, so it was definitely a mistake just uh, wasting those two solitudes, solitudes to kill their second dragon and dash. Uh, it would be fine if uh, my opponent is not playing cards like uh, Tireless Tracker um, or the Saga, I would still be able to outgrind them and win the match. But uh, I figured out uh, what are they playing. Uh, too late and this tireless tracker plus uh, ran another saga means that after wasting all of my resources uh, I'm going to have a lot uh, harder time trying to win uh, this matchup than I thought they also just found another golf after ran so it was uh, a good hand from my opponent And unfortunately, I just lost to myself this game. I didn't uh, didn't play this well. I was kind of tricked uh, by my opponent's deck. I usually uh, I usually play uh, play uh, against uh, these decks as uh, like uh, try to figure out what do I expect from this deck. And I definitely uh, expected more to see some kind of aggressive mono red mid range than the Junt. I did play against uh, Junt uh, game one, but they didn't play the Saga. Uh, they didn't start the game with Mountain, so it was uh, more obvious uh, what I'm playing against. And uh, on turn two, they also played Just Fomp, which is kind of unusual. Uh, so it could have been the, some uh, Ragdos version but when they played the Saga turn 3 I realized I shouldn't I shouldn't uh, just use my resources like that but it was too late at that point and so I kind of just uh, wasted win on game 1 and that costed me the trophy uh, in this league I think most of uh, most of other games I played decent, but this game I it didn't work out well for me. My opponent went for Tutsis. It's uh, it's kind of what I want them to do. Just Tutsis me because my draws are much better than theirs. Actually, this. Uh,
you just uh, when your opponent plays uh, the the brand, you just uh, have to play your reef anyway, make them uh, use the brand to ping the reef and not to plus it. But for some unknown reasons, my opponent decided against pinging the reef, but they just uh, went plusing. I don't know. And uh, I decided to go. I decided to go for. For the second omnet, my opponent uh, I was trying to find a fetch. I didn't find a fetch. Just had the basic island, so I wasn't able to use the ephemerate. But I did find, did I, I did get uh, like uh, four uh, reef abilities last turn, which was enough for me to dominate uh, this game. And uh, this, uh, yeah, this was too much for my opponent. So they didn't have much going on anyway. Uh, that was it. So uh, game three uh, happened. The uh, thing that I feared the most when playing against John, John happened. And uh, I was playing first. I had a decent hand against them. I knew they were probably going to go. If they went go forward the Inquisition, it's going to be great for me because I had two of them in hand. I don't really need to because I already have a good. Good turn to turn to play. They just uh, didn't use the fetch turn turn two. Just used the Avran plus. I didn't have a fetch, so I uh, decided to shock myself in, in case they used the Ursa Saga, but they had the Turok, which is definitely the best play against uh, a four color omnath deck and as you can see uh, they discarded both of my elementals which was pretty pretty bad for me uh, considering they had the run result on the field and i just had uh, two reefs i needed uh, omnath at this point to uh, get back into the game I was able to find the Harbinger. I was able to find Harbinger, and my plan was to play the fetch, and then uh, put Omnat on top, and then play Omnat next turn, and use another fetch to kill the Rand because I expected for my opponent to maybe uh, ping the Reef. Uh, that didn't happen. They decided to take another. Uh, I they decided to take another road by just uh, going uh, Boseju on my land. I was still able to uh, find uh, the Omnath. I get uh, gain some life uh, and uh, put a Kahira in my hand. But my position was. Uh, pretty unfavorable at this point I needed to deal with this friend but I was unable uh, to deal with it and the friend was on 7 and uh, I needed uh, maybe something like Reef and I also uh, ran I just had a stomping ground and uh, left in my deck so I wasn't even able to fetch uh, fetch this turn So it was pretty bad for me I uh, didn't uh, find with the land cycle uh, much anyway and my opponent was just able to continue grinding with the uh, run and then ulti the run play another run and uh, That was definitely it. I wasn't able to get out of this Okay, so we can now uh, also check uh, check my other league with this deck. We'll go from the last game. Uh, this game was against uh, another streamer with Nick Sharkaster Mage. I think uh, the his stream name is the Goddess MTG something like that. 
Uh, I was uh, uh, first a game on the draw, kept a very decent hand with the run with the Flame King Harbinger to find to find the reef, and this is just an, uh, they played the Marfox, and this is just example uh, how good can uh, Orvar be in a different matchup maybe. Uh, in some different matchup, I would be able to turn uh, next turn, next turn go for uh, the Orvar, and then uh, pitch my uh, pitch my Fury, and uh, make uh, two Furies actually, which would be pretty crazy. So I think if I played against some other matchup, I would be able in this position, which can happen relatively a lot if you just naturally draw your Orvar. Uh, especially if you have if you have omnat, so next turn you're able to go uh, omnat, then fetch, then get the five mana, uh, cast your orvar, pitch the fury, do the fury ability, then play ephemerate on fury, make a copy of fury, uh, and uh, get the three fury triggers happen. It's pretty wild. And it's a, it's a, just an example how good the Orvar uh, can uh, really be just when it, it's naturally drawn. But um, after just pitching the Fury here, doing the ephemeral thing, it was enough for my opponent to concede the game. I wanted to do this immediately before they can... Uh, I didn't wait a turn. I would have waited maybe a turn against some different matchup. But I didn't want to wait a turn because my opponent didn't have the second Merfolk to make uh, this uh, uh, indestructible. Okay, so that was the reason, and my opponent uh, conceded the match at this point. I think uh, Merfolk are uh, definitely going to be a bit more popular. Uh, okay, so I had uh, an amazing hand. This game, I'm very interested to see how did how exactly did I succeed to lose this game? Because uh, uh, hand looks uh, pretty amazing. I wanted to go for. Um, Double white source. I could have gone Rogue and Triumph, but I decided to go for Foundry. Rogue and Triumph can be cycled. Okay, my opponent went for Splitting Seas on Sacred Foundry. Okay, so I think this was a pretty decent play. I was able to bounce the other while, kill both of their merfolks, and still have a double a solitude in my hand. With the Femorate and with the Fairy on the field. I decided to do this immediately to let my Teferi live and still hold the Ephemerate, another Teferi and Omnat. They went for another Spelling Seas, which is obviously uh, bother bothering me a bit, but uh, not uh, like it's not like super relevant, but it's uh, it caused me a few problems here. Uh, this uh, this was the first league. In this first league, I played Hall of Fountain, which uh, then after in the second league I replaced it with Steam Vents. Steam Vents felt a bit better in the in the mana base, and I felt like I don't have space to play both of them. Uh, 
I went uh, for another re for another the ferry to slow my opponent down. I guess my opponent had just a pretty solid hand, and uh, they were able to just raise me with this few with this few aggressive plays. Attacking with uh, Mutavolt and just uh, playing a subtlety there, uh, removing Trickster from their hand, holding another Lord uh, makes uh, this position for me pretty bad. As they had the Mutavolt on the field and another Lord is just uh, very hard for me to get back to the game uh, with the limited time and not being able to and I'm like being forced into drawing uh, another not into drawing fury or bust so that was it I did draw the omnat but I didn't have I had a, even a fury but I didn't have a femorate so it was uh, it was too late too late and I had to concede if I had another uh, white source then I could have uh, do the ephemerate, survive the turn, and possibly just win the match completely. I went... Uh, I went to Mulligan to... Uh, 5 cards, a game 3. It was just a solid to the ephemerate, but a solid to the ephemerate is pretty strong in this kind of uh, matchups. Uh, my opponent also had a bit slower hand, so it was it was okay for this kind of uh, game. Just in no hurry, just find my trial, try to get as much colors as possible. And uh, after top decking, top decking the ferry, I definitely just wanted to go for it. Uh, I decided to put it on the top of uh, my library uh, because I thought that uh, the ferry is a good enough uh, play for next turn. Uh, my opponent had just uh, one card at this point and I was expecting them to go for the Mutavolt and I didn't want to go, uh, to use the Ephemerate uh, before them uh, making Mutavolt into creatures so I went for Solitude Ephemerate to kill their Mutavolt in combat and then kill the Master on my turn and uh, I don't know what they had in their hand, but it wasn't enough. And they went for the spreading seas again, uh, but it wasn't enough uh, to mana screw me. Uh, I had uh, the fairy active with the momentary blink in the hand and the grave. Okay, that was that was uh, the end of that game, and uh, now uh, this uh, this is just I will play the two more games. I don't have enough time to play the complete uh, uh, league, so we'll just go through this game. Uh, I had a pretty decent uh, hand here, just going to Topia turn one into possible uh, Ren uh, Harbinger turn two. Um, Uh, so uh, my uh, my ice got uh, my land got iced this turn, so I was forced to just play the harbinger. At this point, uh, I was sure my my 
point is probably on uh, rhinos. So just uh, try to counter the rhinos, and uh, I did that by provoking them to play it with the harbinger. They decided to go for it, they played. Okay, uh, sorry for pausing again. Uh, my opponent played the rhinos on their turn, but it was uh, fine for me. I just uh, able to play my reef, uh, get uh, two of my abilities dealing with uh, second rhinos. They didn't have it anymore, but they did have a crazy good turn, good turn with Omnath, uh, Sion, and Fury. Just killing all my stuff. I uh, cast uh, subtlety to block the shardless agent, but I obviously wasn't at a very good situation at this point. I was able to cast uh, my Kahira, my opponent being on zero cards meant that uh, I can survive the next turn by trading with Sion and jumping the Omnat. Uh, it wouldn't work that way because uh, it had a first strike, but anyway, I was able to survive, but it was kind of hopeless anyway. So that was uh, game one. Game 2 I kept a bit slower hand, but I kind of feel I can do this with playing the 7 uh, blink spells in my deck. I can just uh, hold, uh, keep this kind of hands with uh, Solitude with, or Fury, and then hope to draw uh, the blink spell. Or when you draw, in a slower game like this, when you draw the Utopia's Pro, you kind of almost don't need the blink spell anyway. You can just uh, uh, turn four, play the Omnath, play the Teferi, and shut down your opponent's deck. So my opponent decides uh, not to uh, attack or Teferi with both. So I um, take my chances and just. Uh, Kill the Shardless Agent, make them work more for killing the Teferi, they went the Omnat, for Omnat, I decided to go for Omnat too. I had another one in hand, so I decided to make them work for killing their Teferi again. I drew into fetch, so it was uh, it was good, cool. I just uh, blinked my omnet to get some more uh, reef triggers. And they had uh, rhinos on they had rhinos on suspend. So my Teferi was kind of important. Uh, they succeeded to kill my Teferi with the triple Omna trigger here. But I, uh, I just thought that, uh, as you saw in last games, the Reef here is much more important. I decided to let them resolve the binding. And I'll just uh, go Reef uh, Harbinger next turn. I can find another uh, omnath if I want and just uh, uh, having this much of uh, this amount of reef triggers it's insane so I just uh, went for another one and uh, at this point the game is pretty much over I have the force uh, protection in their turn so I decided to do it on their turn 
I also have the sample T, so I do again the triple reef trigger, I play my solitude, play the ephemerate, uh, still holding uh, force and subtlety, so there's really a uh, my opponent really has limited options. At this point, uh, drawing into another Teferi with all the stuff in my hand, it's pretty impossible for them to do anything uh, from this point. So, uh, I just uh, you can see, I just let the binding resolve. I just uh, at uh, some point of the game, you have to decide that uh, what is your game plan. And my game plan in most ways, is, in most games, is just protecting the reef. I don't care too much about the other cards, I just want to protect my reef and that is the reason why I play uh, 4 Force of Negation in 75 and 3 Subtleties and uh, they just uh, protect uh, the reef uh, really efficiently and uh, that's it, that was the game, I think the game 2 against the Rhinos so we will now watch the game 3 against Rhinos. I had to mulligan the first hand and kept the kept the hand kept six cards which aren't very ideal, especially with the Utopia, Utopia top deck. I'm unable to play my Utopia. But with just one Top decking just one land in right color, it's kind of decent. Unfortunately, my third land was a basic planes, uh, so at this point, I wasn't very optimistic about uh, winning this game. Uh, I wasted my uh, I wasted my turn where I could just uh, play my Teferi and uh, shut their uh, deck off. If I had another land, I could have gone for Utopia turn one, uh, like Teferi turn, turn two, but I was able to um, find a, a turn five, the land I needed to start playing kind of normal game. My opponent was uh, a big advantage here, but I had the force of negation from before, which allowed me to stay in the game. And uh, I decided to go for the Omnath this turn to gain some life. I, uh, I wanted to start gaining life and the next turn hold the Reef of a few of your solitude. I decided to go for the solitude to put myself on slightly more life. And uh, I had uh, another, I had Omnath, still Omnath in hand with Reef and uh, Fury. Uh, I was able to just uh, play the Utopia Sprawl and had the Fury this turn, but again decide to hold it, uh, to try to risk it a bit. And uh, they succeed to put me on the two life. But uh, I was at risk of dying from the second uh, Fire Eyes. Uh, they didn't have it, but they did have uh, a sign of Draco, so I was kind of in a problem. I decided to put Cavern into my hand so I can just uh, hard cast uh, this Fury. I also, uh, Omnath also put me into 6 life, so they just uh, had the one card in hand. 
so it wasn't too much danger of dying but they did have the omnet ability they decided against uh, attacking with shardless which was definitely a wrong move at this point because i would be forced to jump with Ryzen Reef, which is something I definitely don't want to do. They had another Omnat, uh, but I had it too. Followed with the uh, Ryzen Reef. It was about to win me this game. And uh, after putting myself to comfortable uh, fire life, I decided to just uh, to go for the fury, get another reef trigger, kill their omnat again, and hold both ephemerate and the momentary blink with the force of negation, putting myself out of their reach. And uh, after drawing another land, I was already uh, in a pretty favorable position, but that definitely sealed the game. And with um, you, you can also just see how good the these uh, blink spells are in every uh, part of the game, in the mid game, early game, and in the late game. They just are always desirable uh, draw, and I just don't see myself uh, removing the momentary blink uh, from this deck. I just definitely want to play this card. It's one of the best cards in the deck. It's just a perfect fit. Um, so I was uh, in a rush over the clock at this point, uh, but uh, my opponent played the ley line response. I had another blink spell. I just uh, was in a rush in the clock. I didn't even want to uh, pay this mana for this. I just let them let them have it. It's not important. I just attack them with fury in a few turns uh, because they were on zero cards and I had the subtlety, I had the force they went for uh, to remove the subtlety, uh, to remove the fury, I just blinked it, get another uh, fury, uh, get another reef ability, remove the Shardless agent from the field start attacking them, uh, having the force and uh, subtlety means they're definitely dead uh, next turn, and that was it. They didn't even have any uh, any rhinos remaining, so that was it. That was the final game. Uh, I still had uh, two more wins from this league but I don't really have enough time to show them, so I'll conclude uh, the video with this game and uh, as I, I'll just repeat a few things, a few important things I said uh, this, uh, these are the shocks I choose to play in this deck I decided to go just for one triumph, Rogren triumph I think is the most important triumph for this deck I, uh, it is possible to include a few Leyland bindings in that with addition of another mm -hmm. triumph uh, these are the shocks I decided to play in this deck with the follow the three basics one procedure on the main one on site uh, uh, two cavern of souls I think two two or three is ideal number for this build I decided to go for the tree uh, to to be able to fit the Poseidon mostly uh, in this in the main and in the side i think this build is a very near perfect build for uh, the this pure uh, reef elementals build and i think this uh, the additional blink spells uh, especially the momentary blink which have flashback from the graveyard are very very good in this deck and allow you to keep a large amount of uh, otherwise unkeepable hands and uh, just to rely on the early scan of uh, Fury Solitude uh, to win, win you the games and uh, they, as you can, could see in these games, they usually do win the game and are pretty strong as you already know and uh, that's it 
as I already said, uh, the other uh, options are just removing these two from the main, putting two to fairies in the main. Also, uh, another option that I could consider is putting the third force of negation of the main or even the fourth one. Okay, I think this is also uh, uh, also a very good uh, option to just put another uh, a force in the main and just play it like this. I think this is also fine, fine option. Just removing, putting your uh, orva to the side, which is probably even better. Uh, but I just wanted to be prepared for the creativity matchup as it was very popular lately uh, when I played on the MTGO. We didn't see it in these games, but uh, it, I definitely played uh, a lot against creativity in the last, uh, uh, last two weeks. So uh, uh, it's definitely uh, one of the most played decks in the format right now. Uh, as I said, this is also an option, just a force has been uh, very good for me. Uh, it uh, helped against some very important matchups. It uh, solves uh, the decks, uh, bad matchups like uh, some combo decks that you don't have the, in a regular list. You, do, you don't have enough uh, to fight those uh, combo matchups. But uh, Force Main it just fits very good with all the free spells and uh, it's definitely. Nice. Okay, so that's it for the first time. For this time, you can just subscribe to the channel if you like this video, and uh, there will be a lot more in the future. Okay, goodbye. <laughs>